Hi everyone, uh, I am Sean Casista and I am doing a follow-up video on my first video which was created as an introduction to my website nomoretyranny.net. Um, in this video I'm going to be discussing the, um, the, the uh, arguments, the legal arguments that I brought forward into the courts and um, just giving you a basic rundown on, on the understanding of of what they are. I highly recommend that everybody read these documents. Um, they're actually only five pages long. Uh, the actual documents that I have here look a lot thicker because there's case law attached to it and whatnot, but basically, yes, they're only about five pages long. Um, one of the arguments is um, uh, this one here, for, for one, is the uh, um, I'm challenging the jurisdiction of the Highway Traffic Act. Another argument is I'm bringing forward um, documentation that supports the fact that the right to use the road is an unalienable right, um, a natural right, or a common law right, all meaning pretty much the same thing, and that that, that right cannot be interfered with. And uh, the other argument that I have is in regards to um, being forced to, to be uh, being forced to be to sign a private insurance contract. So let's get into this one here. This is this is probably this is absolutely my strongest argument. Okay, there's one piece of little case law that is here, and <clears throat> uh, the case law that I brought provided, um, I built a whole argument surrounding that, and and the argument is so heavily sound in principle. I, I counted, I believe, about two dozen indisputable truths. Okay, that's what a principle is. It's an indisputable truth. Okay, plus there's a number of, uh, you know, definitions and whatnot to even strengthen the argument even more. But let's get to the piece of case law. <clears throat> the piece of case law is from uh, 1909. Um, uh, so Canada is 200 years old, or, and then some. And let me just read the case law here, okay? Where a restraint is sought to be put on a, upon any person in respect of the exercise of any of those natural rights, I think it is the duty of the court to assume that the legislature did not intend to interfere with them unless clear and unequivocal words have been used. Okay, I can't say that any clearer. <laughs> All right, so here we are. One of the things I've done, if you read the Highway Traffic Act and, and, the, and the Compulsory Automobile Insurance Act, um, you are referred to, well, maybe not you, but the one that is being referred to uh, as far as the act, that act applying to that person is the word person, okay? And the word person in every law dictionary I've looked at is defined as two, okay? There's absolutely no doubt about this. That's, it's the same definition. The word person means this. Okay, one is a natural person. Followed by that, it says it's a human. That a natural person is a human being. The second one is a an artificial person. So a natural person and an artificial person. And the artificial person is a corporation. Okay, so you're going to find this very. And I told people like this. Uh, told this pe to people before, and they've laughed at me. And I basic basically told them that hey. IBM is a person. It doesn't even sound right, but that's why, and that's why they laughed. Okay, but IBM is a person. The city of the corporation, or I believe it's the corporation of the city of Mississauga, or the city of the corporation of Mississauga. Either way, it is a person. Okay, so the city of Mississauga is a person. Okay, virtually every business uh, uh, that is out there. Um, has, that has been registered with the government is a person absolutely without a doubt that that is what it is okay
Okay, so um, there's always a definition section in each act. And if you go and look for that word person in the act, so it can, you know, clarify exactly which one is it, you know, is it the natural person or the artificial person? It's not in there. It's not in the Highway Traffic Act, and it's not in the Compulsory Automobile Insurance Act. So where do you go? And we've actually um, I worked on these arguments, by the way, with a, a couple of people over, uh, a couple of friends over a period of about a year and a half or two. And we actually called and found out. We called, uh, I believe, the Attorney General's office, and, you know, just to clarify, you know, okay, so if, there, if there's a word that we can't find the definition of in the Act, uh, where does it we go? Is it we go to the Interpretation Act? or the Legislation Act. From our research, it was the Legislation Act, so we asked um, that. And it was the Legislation Act 2006. Because the Legislation Act 2006 actually replaced the compulsory, I mean, uh, the, uh, the Interpretation Act. Okay? We're trying to interpretate what the law is. We're trying to interpretate what statutes are. That's where a lot of the def uh, definitions are. So anyways, so we found in the uh, Legislation Act that it said, okay, that, uh, section 87, in every act and regulation, person includes a corporation. Now the key word here is the word includes. What does includes mean? Because this is very deceptive here too, because from what I've been reading, every definition of the word includes means to contain. Absolutely without a doubt, and I've given plenty of definitions of the word uh, includes in there. Now there's also, uh, okay, principles, okay, maxims of common law maxims, okay, that have been dedicated to the word includes. And here's one of them, okay, the inclusion of one is the exclusion of all others, okay? And I'm going to give you an example. Okay, you walk into a restaurant and you, you know, you're looking at the combos up on the screen there. You want to order your food. Um, what does combo one have in it? Combo one includes, okay, a hamburger, fries, and a soft drink. That means it excludes the cookies and the bags of chi and the bag of chips that's sitting there on the counter. Okay, that's a, I have clearly defined what that is and, and even more, it's like, uh, I'm not going to get too much on this. you, you got to read this document, okay? But basically, this is challenging the jurisdiction of the Act, and I have not gotten any kind of response from anybody in regards to the six trials, no response. And this is, I believe, this is the strongest argument that I can possibly make, even stronger than the other ones, because it's right off the bat, it's challenging a statute. Okay, does it apply to natural persons? Okay. Natural rights applies to natural persons. Absolutely, without a doubt. Do they apply? Do natural rights apply to corporations? Now, there's some trickery here on how we've gotten away from this, and um, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a, in a little bit. But um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll just move on right now for, to something else. <clears throat> here we got a piece of case law that I'm going to read out of this document. And this, like I said, this document is about um, uh, deciphering whether the right to use the road is a natural right or is it, a, is it a privilege. Without a doubt, in my mind, and I could have used a lot of American case law here, because um, uh, there are some documentation that says uh, you can use uh, uh, American case law. But there's enough case, Canadian case law here to, uh, to just go with the flow here. This document is fairly thick, but again, it's only five pages of reading. If you go to uh, uh, tab three is where my arguments sit. And I'm just going to uh, point out uh, one of the, the pieces of case law here I want to read and give you an idea of how far we've come. Okay, this is a, a city of Craig versus the city of Merritt. This is 1913, and this is in British Columbia. The part that really interests me in this case law, and let me just state that this is actually a, a really, this is an actual piece of history here. It's in the city of Merritt, 1913, where they were actually, uh, the city of 
mayor at the um, city employees were doing some work on the on the roadways and they left some piping and whatnot on the off to the side of the road and this guy was I believe he was driving at night uh, in his vehicle um, and he hit one of these pipes with his wheel and it damaged the wheel and there was like two hundred dollars of you know it's a two hundred dollar wheel you know two hundred dollars back then like a lot of money and obviously the rich can only drive that back in those days but anyways um, <clears throat> uh, so this is what the the whole story the, why the whole case came to play and let me just read some of the, the, the stuff they're talking about the Highway Traffic Act and they're mentioning how um, how uh, there was a some kind of dispute of, or whatnot of about the registration of that individual's vehicle and the getting a license plate and for the individual to pay for that license plate and the registration okay so there was a fee attached to it okay so <clears throat> now they, they talked about why that was necessary to do it and I agree with it wholeheartedly I, I agree with what why they brought in that whole thing okay and let, let me just talk about it here or I'll quote the uh, case law it says the object of such provisions is clearly for the benefit of the public in the event of the law being violated, the offender can be readily identified by the number on his car and brought to justice. The car, whilst not an, an outlaw on the highway, is yet without a doubt a very dangerous machine unless clear and very, uh, unless, a uh, very dangerous machine unless under very careful control. Okay, so I wholeheartedly agree with that whole concept of having you know a license plate and everything like that um, <clears throat> but the judge in that case also went on to say okay that the statute containing as it does some drastic provisions affecting one's common law rights and especially so in the matter of the burden of proof is clearly framed with an eye to the protection of the public and the question of revenue is, I think, merely an incidental, is merely incidental in the act. Okay, so think of the wording there. The act contains drastic provisions. Okay, this is like just over a hundred years ago when the common law, our common law right to travel was without a doubt recognized. Nobody knows that we have a common law right to travel. I go and ask people what the hell the common law is, and people don't know. They can't even ask it. What are those, what rights are attached to the common law? People don't know. <clears throat> and I'll get into that again in a minute. But the bottom line is, is they're saying there's drastic provisions that have affected our common law rights. And let's take a few steps past that, like, uh, and, and not to mention the money, okay? So there's, you know, there's a, some kind of revenue generator here, okay? Maybe it's not a revenue generator. Back then, it was just okay to pay for that plate, okay? Once it's been paid for, that's it. You're registered with the vehicle, okay? From there on, you just, you know, you buy another car, you put the plate on another vehicle. And that, you know, maybe cheap, <clears throat> maybe pay a small fee again to, uh, you know, say that this is the model of vehicle, or even just keep the plate attached to that vehicle. Well, that probably wouldn't work, but anyways you get the point <clears throat> so think of how far we've come I'm not sure when they actually brought in the uh, the actual uh, validation stickers where you have to pay an annual fee of I think it's seventy dollars a year okay when it started it was probably just a few dollars but they're again it's taking a step in the wrong direction here you know was were people bitching and complaining about that I don't know back then it's been such a long time ago. I don't have any history on that. I, I don't. I haven't read anything about it. But I imagine, I imagine the people that knew that their rights were being infringed upon, you know, were bitching and complaining. And then they raised the fee some more and some more and some more and some more over time. So you know, once they passed that, you know, <clears throat> that's it. There's, if it goes up, you're. If nothing was done to when it was passed, uh, the whole act of, or that provision of paying for the sticker, <clears throat> I mean, nothing else is going to change. You can't, you can't do anything about it. Okay, so now we got this problem. 
and you know from my perspective okay we've all heard the uh, phrase inch by inch it's a cinch well this is exactly the uh, you know a scenario of how that has you know we've gone from just you know taking a right and infringing on it a little bit where we are we are today we have got so many that act so badly infringes on our, on our natural rights our natural right to use the road that we don't even know it because I mean I know people that are really upset about what's going on but you know it's like we're just used to it because that's just the way it is that's where we are today and, and let's take another step okay let's take another step in the wrong direction here like there was a time when the police were not allowed to just run your plate because it was an invasion of privacy there's information there you know attached to your plate I mean they had to have a good reason like if you're driving down the road and you know you're driving recklessly and the vehicle swerving off the road or something then he had a uh, good reason to uh, pull you over and check to see if your you know the vehicle was yours and you know, just follow up on it, you know, what's going on here. Okay, but now they don't even do that. Now they just, I believe they're bringing in technology that scans your plates and, you know, they can drive around and anybody that's not got a valid a validation sticker or they got some kind of, you know, their driver's license has been suspended on that plate or whatever the case may be, it's just, it's just getting right out of hand. Okay, is what I'm trying to tell you. So... This is this is this is this is, a, this is really important stuff. That we, this is unacceptable. What's going on here? Now I'm not going to talk too much about this one here. The, this other act is just okay. You're basically being forced to sign a contract. Okay, I define what freedom is and what it isn't in here. This is a really good document here. Again, five pages with a piece of case law attached to it. Strongly recommend you reading it. But let me talk about something else here. Let's you know. Like I said, inch by inch, it's a cinch, and we're we're taking new steps here. Um, in Mississauga here, I, I just you know a while ago I found out that you no, know, I, I have a dog, and I was walking my dog out in uh, Port Credit in a park in Port Credit, and Animal Control, you know, approached me. I had my dog off the leash. She's a well-behaved dog. I've got her well trained. She listens to me really well. Okay, and I, I'll you know I'll take responsibility for the actions that. What if anything bad happens? Okay, but she's really great. She's a great dog. She'll, I can walk her up the sidewalk. She'll walk ahead of me. She'll stop at the road and she'll wait for me before we she crosses a road. Like that's how smart this dog is, and that's how well I've got her trained. Anyways, they're passing uh, the acts of law here in Mississauga, or I don't actually think they're acts of law, but they're passing bylaws or whatever the case may be, where we all have to register our dogs. Uh, get a we gotta get a license, and there's an annual fee of twenty dollars a year. Like this is absolutely ridiculous. There's no way I'm paying that fee. Right on the very first page of the Bible, it says God created man in His image and gave man dominion over every creeping living thing upon the earth. Okay, the word license. If you look it up, the word license. By definition means permission okay and where are you getting this permission from okay the city of Mississauga is giving me permission now by forcing me to get a uh, uh, fail out a dog application a uh, dog license application okay to get permission to own a, 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 a dog <laughs> right which is ridiculous and I already have permission it is my God-given natural right Okay, and where's the where's the balance here, or where's the argument sitting from um, their perspective? A corporation, an artificial person, okay, a corporation, the city of Mississauga, 
is telling a natural person that you have to fill out this application, meaning we're forcing you to give away your consent, because that's what the application is, basically. Okay, as soon as you go in there and you put your name to this, uh, this application, it means that you've basically waived your, your natural rights, and now you're asking for permission. There's a great big deception here, and it works the same with the, 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 um, uh, the Highway Traffic Act. You become bound by the Highway Traffic Act when you fill out the driver's application and then you produce the driver's license. Now, here's the big key thing with the uh, um, this dog license thing here. If I don't pay, I won't pay that fine. If I get, if I go to court and fight, I have to fight one of those fines, I won't pay that fine. There's absolutely no way I'm going to pay that fine. Guess what they, I believe that they're going to do, okay? They are going to suspend the driver's license. I absolutely guarantee you, anybody that does not do that, that they don't pay their fine, they will suspend the driver's license. Meaning, <clears throat> they are taking away that natural right because of something completely not even associated with driving on the road or, or using the roads or, or whatever, the Highway Traffic Act. It's got no bearing on any of that, but that's what they will do. I'm sure of it. Okay, so you got to think about that. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty severe stuff that they're, that pretty bold moves from their perspective that they're doing. Again, let me, let me just point out what's going on here. Okay, just picture, okay, as I stated, the nation of Canada is founded upon principles that recognize the supremacy of God and the rule of law. Well, picture this house, okay, that's, that's being built. The first thing you start is with a foundation, okay? So you got this foundation, okay? That's the foundation of our country. Okay, it's a solid cement foundation. You can't remove that foundation. You can knock anything else that, that's on top of that foundation, you can knock it over, whatever. Okay, and this foundation has been there for 200 years. It adopted common law as the foundation. Okay, absolutely without a doubt, that foundation is there and it stands. Now, what we have on top of this foundation and what has been growing on top of this foundation, specifically in the last, uh, ever since World War II, are numerous... Okay, probably literally thousands of statuto statutory laws, okay, which have um, less authority than the common law. Okay, here's, here's a, a principle of uh, common law. Okay, laws that derogate from the common law should be strictly construed, meaning, or statutes that uh, derogate from the common law should be strictly construed, meaning that statutes that move away from the common law should be really seriously taken a look at carefully before we actually pass that into an actual statutory law. Okay, we need to consider that. I mean, does the public get actually educated every time a, an, an, a, 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 an act of law, a statute, is passed and brought into play here? Do we have any say in it? I guarantee you, if we all knew the information uh, that I put together here, if we all gathered that and we, if we were all educated uh, Canadians and, and Americans, I guarantee you the people would be freaking out about what's going on out there right now. We would be living in a completely different country if the knowledge was there 40, 50 years ago. Okay, we would just not l allow this stuff to happen. Okay? Everything that the, the government does appears to be doing behind closed doors, and they do it. Uh, um, uh, um, when they bring in an act of law, they do it under the under the cloak of uh, safety and security of the people. It's a load of crap. 
Anyways, back to this foundation. Okay, this foundation is, um, you got this foundation, and let's just put nothing but cards on top of it, okay? So we got this large foundation with literally thousands of cards on top of this foundation, and they're piled up on top of each other, and they're piled up on top of each other, and up on top of each other. And, you know, at the bottom of all this is stuff that we can all understand. The statutory stuff. I mean, you try reading this, even just the, the Highway Traffic Act. I mean, it, it's written in a foreign language. It's written in legalese, uh, is what it's been termed by a lot of people. It's legalese. And here's, a, here's a, um, another maxim of law, another principle that Canada was founded upon. Um, ignorance of fact is excused but not ignorance of the law. Ignorance of fact is excused, but not ignorance of the law. Okay? So, that was established, meaning that we should all know what the common law is. But there's absolutely no way that an individual can digest the information that is being brought forward by governments when they legislate an, an act of law into play. Like, you can't understand the stuff that they're writing. And there's literally a library full of this stuff, okay? There's so many acts of law in place now that there's just a library. This is just all stuff that's meant to confuse us. So getting back to the House of Cards, we've got a House of Cards that is built so high that we're on top of, and we can't even see the bottom. Meaning that foundation is so far from where we're all standing now because of all these statues that have been built up. In my perspective, blow these cards right off the, the foundation. Okay? But before we do that, we got to start educating. This should be mandatory education in this country, in every country for that matter, to have our common law, our, our inherent common law, part of our, um, our, our knowledge base and, to, and the very basic court process on how to go into the courts and, and protect and preserve our liberties. And if a judge is acting out of line with what he's supposed to be doing, that judge should be held accountable. Same with the prosecutor. Okay, there's just so many things that have need to take place here that, you know, that aren't, and they should be. We need to get back to the roots of our freedoms. And I believe that 100%, if, if we get, it's the change is going to be difficult. This is where I'm at. I hope uh, everybody has taken this information and gotten something from this information. Uh, uh, take the time to read it, understand it. Uh, it's not that it's not that complicated, and um, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Um, uh, I'll go to I'll go to bat for people. Um, I'll try if anybody locally gets into a uh, into issues like this, uh, I'll help them out if I can. Um, 
I can't really do too much without any more without financial support. I gotta I gotta compensate for all my losses here, and and um, I hope everybody you know takes the time to read this and sees the value that's there and will help support uh, this cause. Um, that being said, uh, thanks for listening in once again, and uh, I hope you uh, uh, appreciate both the videos that I put together, and that's about it. Thanks.